So about eight months ago, I made this video on how to create two separate USB flash drives to help you in case of a Windows emergency. And a lot of you really found it useful because the video's gotten over a million views. But apparently something has changed in the process. Normally a video creator is just going to change the description and point you to a different link. But from what I'm hearing from you guys, apparently the process is completely different now. So I'm making an updated video to show you exactly how to do it the right way. And just so you know you're in the right place, this video is going to teach you two things. First, we're going to create a Windows Media installation disk so that you can boot into Windows troubleshooting if you end up having blue screens or similar problems. The second is going to be a utility disk called Herons, which is a very powerful suite of tools that technicians have been using for years and I still use to this day. So in this video, I'm going to go through the process again, step by step. I'm going to correct some of the things I should have done differently in the first video. Hopefully after this video, you'll have everything you need to create these two disks. Let's get going. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is the Windows Media Creation Tool. Now, before we get started, this is primarily designed for Windows 11, Windows 10, and Windows 8.1. If you have versions of Windows older than Windows 7, we'll talk about that later in the video and I'll tell you what you need to do. So let's assume you have either Windows 8, 10, or 11, and I'm gonna show you where to go to get the software and then how to create the disk. So everything I'm about to show you is 100% free, but you will need two blank flash drives with no personal data on them, and they need to be about eight gigabytes or larger. If you don't have those, I'll put links down in the description for you. You can have them ship right to your door, and then I'll walk you through how to do this. Now, if you have a blank flash drive that's brand new you really don't need to do anything other than just plug it in it's going to pop up as an empty drive however if you have a drive that you already have data on and you do not need to keep that data what you're going to want to do is find your flash drive in your windows file explorer and then you're going to want to format that drive so that you can use it for creating these disks you're just simply going to right click on the drive and then click format in the formatting options, you can choose either FAT32 or NTFS. I usually use NTFS. If you want to give the drive a label, you can put a label on it. It doesn't matter. These disks are going to give you that option to create it again anyway. So you can just leave it blank and then click Start. Now remember, this will wipe the disk, so make sure you have all your data off of it. It's going to take a second. Go ahead and click OK. It's going to take another second and then it's going to tell you format is complete. Now you have a blank flash drive that you can use to create these recovery disks. Go to Google and type in download Windows Media Creation Tool followed by Windows 11 or 10 depending on what version you have. And you'll see here the very first link is going to point you to that website. If you have Windows 11, same thing. If you have Windows 8, same thing. You're going to go to the operating system that corresponds with your Windows. In this case, Windows 8. Now the process is a little different for Windows 8, so I just want to go through and show you that. Once you select that product language and click Confirm, then you'll have the choice of which download you want. Now Windows 8 does not have a built-in creation tool, so you'll have to download the ISO file but I'll show you what you can do with that here in just a few minutes. But go ahead and download that file and have it on your computer. Now in this case, I'm gonna do the Windows 10 installation disk because that's what I've got on my computer. Scroll down a little bit where it says create Windows 10 installation media and this will be the same for Windows 11. Right here underneath create Windows 10 installation media, you're gonna click download now. Now when your download is done, you just simply wanna click on it you're gonna get a Microsoft licensing agreement. Just go ahead and click accept. It's gonna take a couple seconds and then you're gonna get a couple options here. One is to upgrade this PC now. We don't want that. We wanna to go to the next option, which is to create installation media USB flash drive. So check that box and then click next. So the next box that comes up is gonna give you the choice between choosing language, edition, and architecture. You might want to just leave that bottom checkbox enabled unless you need to change it from say 32 bit to 64 bit. Now on this next screen, you're going to want to choose USB flash drive. And again, make sure you have an empty flash drive and you know which drive letter it is. Click next, and then you're going to select that drive letter. In this case, it's drive letter K. So I'm going to go ahead and select that drive and then click next. At this point, you just sit back and wait for Microsoft to download the ISO file, and then it will create that flash disk for you and let you know when it's done. 
Okay, so the media creation kit has installed onto the flash drive, and now you can go ahead and just click finish. At this point, now you're ready to boot to the drive. Okay, so now we have the Windows installer disk. Now what we want to do is we want to create the Herons disk. And this is where the problem came for a lot of my viewers because they changed the process. So we're going to walk through it step by step, and hopefully it doesn't change anytime soon because then we'll have to make another video. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take that second flash drive. This one's for the Herons. We're going to go ahead and pop it into the computer. And when Windows detects it, it should pop up as an empty drive just like this. But remember, if you have anything on it, you need to make sure all of that data is off this drive because it will be wiped in this process. So I've got drive K ready to go. Let me show you how to do it. Now, just as before, we want to go find the download link. So you're going to type in Google, download Herons boot USB. Go ahead and search. First page that comes up should take you right here to the Herons boot CD PE website. Click on download. Now this page right here is just going to show you all the different utilities that are on the Herons disk. Don't get distracted with these ads over here. This is just how they pay for the bandwidth. You can certainly look through all these tools. This is everything that is available on the Herons boot disk and it is pretty amazing. Tons of stuff. But scroll all the way down until you see this ISO file right here. The, right, in, right next to file name. Click on that and then it's going to actually download that ISO file. This is where the steps get a little different. Up at the very top, click on USB booting. And this is going to tell you about the software called Rufus, which is basically a software that allows you to create bootable flash drives. Scroll down right here and where it says insert the flash drive you want to prepare into your computer, click download Rufus. Now, as you can see, it's going to start downloading. And remember, we have the ISO file that's downloading also. So Rufus is already done. As you can see here, both Herons and the Rufus are in fully downloaded, but there's a couple things we need to do when you run this if you want to make sure it's compatible with just about any computer. As you can see here, there's a couple steps, including activating dual UEFI mode, and then you have to do that before you choose the ISO. So I'm going to walk you through it. First thing you want to do, just go ahead and click on the Rufus that you downloaded. According to this, you want to open Alt plus E to activate dual UEFI mode. You're supposed to do this before you select the ISO file. Otherwise, the FAT32 format can't be selected within Rufus. I'm going to select the Hiren's ISO file. And magically like that, it does say BIOS or UEFI on the target system. You have a choice of MBR or GPT. If you have Windows 11, you needed to use GPT. But everything else you can leave as MBR. So at this point, you've got your drive selected. In my case, was drive K. Make sure that matches up with the flash drive that you have. Here's the ISO file. I've got MBR for the partition scheme. And again, GPT for Windows 11. BIOS or UEFI for the target system. If you have an older system, check this box here. This makes some changes to older BIOSes that allow that drive to be recognized. If you have a newer system within the last four, five, six years, don't worry about it. This option here installs a boot record that allows boot selection and can masquerade the BIOS USB drive ID. This is for a little bit better compatibility, so I'm going to go ahead and check that and then just leave this here on the default 0x80. For the volume label, you can leave it as is or call it Herons. For the file system, I'm going to leave it on FAT32 to make it the most compatible. Leave the cluster size as is. Now, if you aren't 100% sure about the condition of the flash drive, you can check this box here. This will check the flash drive for any bad sectors. Now this process will take a few minutes longer if you check this box here because it is going to scan the drive. If you are pretty sure the flash drive is okay, you can uncheck this and the disk will be created a lot faster. But otherwise, just go ahead and click start. And again, remember, this is going to completely wipe that flash drive. So make sure you have all your data off of it. And here's your warning. Again, click OK when you're ready, and then it's going to start creating that drive. Now, as this process continues, you may very well see a pop-up here where Herons is going to start in adding all the programs to this disk. That's fine. Just wait for this window over here to finish before you do anything else. Okay, looks like the Herons disk is done. As you can see here, it says ready. So I'm going to close this. If you look here, there are a ton of tools that are installed on this disk. So the next thing is just to boot up to it. 
Okay, so now we have both our Windows Media Creation Tool and our Herons Disk. It's time to plug them in and fire up the laptop. Now there's a couple different ways to boot to your flash drive. The easiest way is when your computer first turns on and you're gonna see a series of function keys. One of them should say boot order. You can hit that corresponding key and then select your boot drive from there. You can additionally make that change in your BIOS, but that is a little more complicated. Or if you get to the Windows troubleshooting screen here, you can choose the use a device option and then select your USB device and then let your computer restart. Either way, all of these options will allow you to boot to that flash drive. So as you can see, once you have the Herons booted, now you have all these utilities that you can use to not only check your system, but actually access your file system so you can back up your files and whatever. This is absolutely 1000% worth its weight in gold if your computer ever dies and you haven't backed up your files. Now there's other programs like Medicat and, and Linux and some other things that you can use. This is one that a lot of technicians have used for many years and it's just one I'm used to. But feel free to leave in the comments if you have another utility that you'd like me to show you. And just like with the Herons boot disk, with the Windows installation disk, you can use this to access a ton of tools that you might not normally have access to, including startup repair, system restore, uninstalling Windows updates, and command prompts where you can run a check on your hard drive, you can do a system file checker. There's a bunch of different things you can do using this Windows utility, which is absolutely one of the reasons I highly recommend you get it. And additionally, if for some reason you have to just completely wipe and reinstall your computer, you can boot to this disk and install Windows. So it serves two purposes and it's absolutely just wonderful. You should absolutely put this in your arsenal. Now, I did make an entire video on how to use this particular Windows troubleshooting, so I'll link that up in the top for you. But in the meantime, that's all you got to do to create these disks. So now you have the two recovery disks that you're going to need in case you either have a problem with Windows and you need to get into the Windows troubleshooting or you need to reinstall Windows or you just need to run tests on your computer and you can't get into Windows to do that. And I absolutely recommend you keep both of these in your arsenal, in your toolkit, because they're fantastic. Now, I did mention earlier about if you had a Windows 8 installation on your computer, there is not a Windows Media Creation tool for that, but as I showed you earlier, you can download the ISO file. What you're going to need to do, instead of using a media creation tool, you can use that Rufus software, the same one that we used to create the Herons disk, you can use that to create a bootable Windows 8 installer disk. So instead of pointing to the Herons ISO, just point it to the Windows 8 ISO, leave all the settings the same, and then when you're done, you'll have a fully bootable Windows 8 recovery disk. Now, Windows recovery disks are great, especially if you need to troubleshoot your computer, but one thing I would absolutely recommend is that if your computer comes with a recovery software of any kind, and you'll know if that system has a recovery utility because you'll get those annoying pop-ups when you first set up your computer telling you to create a recovery disk. Now, the difference between what we did today and the recovery disk is those recovery disks basically create a factory image of your computer that includes all the drivers and all the software that comes preloaded on it. The disks that we create today are going to be very basic generic Windows installer disks, which will still work and you can still activate them, but you're going to have to download drivers, probably download updates and things like that. So both of those are good utilities to have, and I absolutely recommend them for every Windows user. Now, I did make a video about how to create that recovery media. I'll put that in the video description as well. So now you have the Windows recovery media, but what do you do if you have a Windows problem? In this video up here, I go through and I show you pretty much how to do anything and fix any Windows problem using that troubleshooting menu. Thanks for watching.